The 2017 crop of superhero movies is pretty impressive, and it's safe to say that more than one wildly exceeded expectations. If you're looking for the best, we're running down the seven superhero movies released by the major studios in 2017, ranked from worst to best. Minor spoilers follow. Justice League while audiences have been somewhat forgiving of the DC Extended Universe's growing pains, critics have been merciless. Unfortunately, Justice League proved no exception. On the bright side, fans were finally treated to a visceral thrill of seeing Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash together on the big screen. But the film's uneven plotting and forgettable villain are hard to overlook. Those weaknesses were mitigated to an extent by a couple of rousing action sequences and the winning presences of Jason Momoa. Moa's Aquaman and Ezra Miller's scene-stealing Flash. So, it may not have been the Justice League all fans wanted, but it was ultimately an enjoyable, if flawed, vehicle for some of the most beloved comic characters ever to grace the page. The Lego Batman Movie Fans were delighted when the Lego Batman movie, a spin-off of 2014's surprisingly excellent animated feature The Lego Movie, was announced. The film continued the emphasis on clever, quirky, layered humor and rewarded fans of The Dark Knight with a steady stream of references to his past cinematic incarnations. As good as it was, however, the Lego Batman movie is still largely inessential. It broke no new ground in terms of superhero films or Batman stories, failing to hit the creative highs that the year's superior superhero movies all reached in one way or another. It's squarely in the middle of the pack. But as an animated Lego outing, it's still a heck of a lot better than the disappointing Lego Ninjago movie. Logan Hugh Jackman's stunning 17-year run as Wolverine in the X-Men series may never be surpassed, and he could hardly have gone out on a higher note than Logan. The film hit the right notes for the character in a way that no previous X-Men movie truly had, thanks to its grim storyline and hard R rating, which finally allowed for an appropriately Wolverine-esque level of violence. If there was one consistent complaint about the film, it's that it may have taken its grim and melancholy tone a bit too far. The bleak and unforgiving world is consistently rendered in stark, dusty tones, and the fates of our major characters aren't pretty. Logan is a great Wolverine movie at long last, but this year's best superhero movies were able to tell stories every bit as compelling and not quite as bleak. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy certainly overperformed. Nobody expected a team of virtually unknown characters featuring a tree and a gun-toting raccoon to capture the hearts of moviegoers. But writer-director James Gunn brought passion and vision, not to mention a stellar cast to the project. Guardians overcame low expectations to become one of Marvel's most loved films, meaning that its sequel faced expectations that were anything but low. Fortunately, Gunn and his ragtag team of space heroes largely delivered with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The action sequences are even crazier this time around, but the family-oriented story also serves as a framework for Gunn to explore some of the more unlikely family dynamics of his characters and to delve into some of the more complex aspects of their personalities. <laughs> She just told everyone your deepest, darkest secret! Dude, oh, come on, I think you're overreacting a little bit. You must be so embarrassed! Volume 2 may not quite have lived up to its predecessor, but it benefited from not trying too hard to achieve that lofty goal. Plus, any film that features Kurt Russell as a quasi-immortal living planet in a human form earns points for its sheer awesomeness. Wonder Woman the DC Extended Universe has largely failed to live up to expectations, but there's one brilliant exception. Director Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman starring Gal Gadot as a legendary Amazonian blew away audiences, single-handedly resurrecting hope for the DCEU as a whole. Jenkins knocked all kinds of holes in the well-worn theory that audiences wouldn't respond to a female-centric superhero movie by turning in a spectacularly shot and choreographed, well-paced, and flat-out entertaining feature anchored by Gadot's alternately great and badass performance. Wonder Woman suffers from only minor imperfections plot-wise. It bears more than a passing resemblance to Marvel's Captain America, the first Avenger, and some critics felt Chris Pine's Steve Trevor could have been de-emphasized in terms of the title character's motivation. But overall, Wonder Woman is a spectacular big-screen solo debut for a character Hollywood has famously struggled to adapt. Jenkins' deft directorial touch and refusal to objectify her lead only served to make the character's subsequent appearance in Justice League function as as a reminder of this far superior film. Spider-Man Homecoming 
Until 2015, Sony Pictures held the sole film rights to Spider-Man. The first appearance of Spidey in the MCU in 2016's Captain America Civil War proved what audiences have long known. Spider-Man belongs in a larger universe with the rest of Marvel's heroes. Under Ruth! Hey everyone. It doesn't hurt that Tom Holland is terrific in the role of Peter Parker, or that Michael Keaton, in a casting masterstroke, creates one of the more compelling villains in the MCU as Adrian Toomes, also known as the Vulture. But the true genius of Homecoming is in the decision to give us the bumbling, insecure 15-year-old Peter that previous cinematic incarnations never showed, and to let interactions with castmates and other heroes inform and develop the character as they've always done in the comics. This Spider-Man has plenty of room to grow, and his first solo vehicle is an outstanding beginning. Thor Ragnarok The best superhero film of 2017 had the lowest expectations of them all. Thor Ragnarok seemed like almost an afterthought, except to fans who'd been paying attention. The signing of indie director Taika Waititi piqued the interest of those familiar with his unique comic voice. When you're a vampire, you become very sexy. And the news that the plot would incorporate elements of the Planet Hulk storyline from the comics, as well as intriguing cast additions including Kate Blanchett and Jeff Goldblum, clued them in that they might be in for something special. Thor Ragnarok destroyed critical and box office expectations by finding the innate silliness of the MCU's God of Thunder. Yeah, this is called the Re Re Revengers. Revengers? Yeah, I mean, we don't have to have a name. We could have no name. The movie's nonstop humor is liberally balanced with plenty of stunning action, a brilliant soundtrack, and a truly threatening villain in Blanchett's Hella. The welcome returns of Tom Hiddleston's Loki and Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner slash Hulk, not to mention some strongly drawn new characters and one well-placed Doctor Strange cameo, connect the film to the larger MCU. But Thor Ragnarok is its own singularly insane flick, and one of Marvel's best. Here's hoping we get a Watiti directed Thor 4 as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.